Our guest today in the IPI Global Observatory interview series with candidates vying to become the United Nations Secretary General is Miroslav Lojcok, the Minister of Foreign and European Affairs of the Slovak Republic. I'm going to be asking Mr. Lajcok the same four questions that we are putting to the other candidates for Secretary General whom we are interviewing for the Global Observatory. We have shared these questions with him in advance as we have with all the other interviewees. First, the United Nations Charter describes the Secretary General as the Chief Administrative Officer of the organization and the person who can call the attention of the Security Council to matters the Secretary General believes may threaten international peace and security. But the job has evolved into something much more than that, a mix of global diplomacy and oversight of the UN's executive office serving the three pillars of the organization, human rights, peace and security, and development. How would you shape the job and define your priorities for the office? I think it was uh, Trig Valley, the first uh, Secretary General, who described his job as the most impossible job in the world, and I think he knew what, we was what he was talking about at that time. Yeah, because uh, the expectations are very high of this job, and uh, this is a, a job that uh, really involves uh, several functions, being the top civil servant, responsible, chief administrative officer, responsible for the smooth operation of the secretariat that, that has to be professional, effective, meeting the highest uh, professional and ethical standards and serving the needs of the member states. And at the same time, it's the top diplomat who also have a, a role to uh, play uh, on the political field according to the Article 99 of the Charter. Uh, so there has to be a combination of these two uh, roles and of, of these two jobs. I would also say that it's extremely important for the Secretary General to maintain a regular dialogue with the member states, with the members of the Security Council. It's really important that they work in harmony and uh, that the Secretary General is the, is the face and the voice of the international community that, uh, and that the, the international community feels that through the Secretary General uh, the right problems are addressed at the right time and the right way. So uh, it is generally recognized that the United Nations has the unique convening power that can get everybody at the table to discuss about the issues. So I see the role of the Secretary General as the one who should have the convincing power, being the bridge builder, someone who through the arts of listening uh, will be able to accommodate different views and help building consensus, a top communicator, facilitator of a dialogue and, and moderator of the dialogue, someone who brings up the issues and uh, helps uh, setting the agenda for the UN bodies. That's uh, my uh, understanding of this uh, extremely challenging uh, job that I have always admired being the professional diplomat for almost 30 years of my life. Can you discuss aspects of your background and professional career that manifest one, proven leadership, managerial abilities, and strategic vision. Two, extensive experience in international relations and multilateral diplomacy. And three, strong global communication skills. I've been a professional diplomat uh, my whole uh, adult life. I've uh, been through all the uh, steps in the, the national uh, foreign service, starting from the desk officer through the chief of the cabinet of the minister. I was ambassador twice and now for six years I, I'm the foreign minister in the third uh, government uh, of Slovakia. I have also held uh, several international mandates under the UN responsibility or the European Union responsibility. So uh, as a foreign minister I'm responsible uh, to lead uh, the ministry uh, uh, that employs more than 1,200 people and we have more than 90 uh, establishments, embassies uh, all over the world. So it's also about the management, uh, about the setting the policies right. Uh, in my uh, international engagements, I would like to mention uh, my responsibility for setting the conditions for the independence referendum in Montenegro. Uh, there were no rules uh, and I, the only uh, expectations that was uh, there from me was to make sure that the process is legitimate uh, and accepted by everyone and uh, through the arts of mediation 
I was able to set the condition, which was very unique, uh, because I proposed and it was accepted 55% of those who are taking part in the referendum uh, need to be achieved in order for the referendum to be valid. Uh, we uh, prepared a special law uh, setting the framework for the referendum. That law was adopted in the Parliament of Montenegro uh, with everyone voting in favour, no one against, no one abstaining. And then the referendum uh, gathered the participation of 86.2% of, uh, of, 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 uh, of the population and the result was 55.5% in favour. So no one has ever questioned the result of this referendum. Uh, then I was uh, uh, the High Representative of the International Community and the European Union Special Representative in Bosnia-Herzegovina and in that position I was leading uh, the multinational team of several hundreds of people and managing the budget of some 20 million euro. Uh, that, and I was overseeing the, uh, the post-conflict mission on behalf of the United Nations and regularly reporting to the UN Security Council. The, the, I had the experience to, to work with these multinational uh, teams. Uh, so uh, these are just two experiences. I've, I've worked also in uh, Brussels as a managing director for Europe and Central Asia, where I was also responsible for several hundreds of, of people with different background and uh, setting the European Union's foreign policy with regard to the number of countries uh, as different as from Norway to Kazakhstan. Uh, so that was, uh, again, a very unique experience uh, uh, then to fit this service into the system of European institutions. So I really believe that I have uh, uh, enough experience uh, from my national service and from my international careers and I've learned uh, that uh, when you want to be successful, you really have to know the environment, you have to study the history, you have to understand the mentality, you have to be able to talk to people, you must be able to apply uh, the policies uh, or proposals that fit perfectly for that particular situation. And that's the philosophy I have applied in my professional life and I must say that it, 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 it works. Uh, the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement afford the United Nations an opportunity to move forward under the most comprehensive sustainable development agenda in its history. The 17 sustainable development goals known as the SDGs have universal application to all countries from north to south. They integrate the three fundamental aspects of development, economic, social and environmental, and they include issues that were once outside the scope of development, particularly peace and climate change. How do you see the Secretary General's role in promoting and prioritizing this overall agenda? I'm uh, very proud of what the UN has achieved uh, in the area of sustainable development. Last year was a particularly successful year and we were able uh, to agree on a number of groundbreaking uh, decisions especially the sustainable development goals that change the philosophy of sustainable development because unlike the previous millennium goals they are much more comprehensive and they in involve all the countries developing and developed countries uh, but this this effort was complemented of course by the successful outcome of the Paris conference on, on climate change on the success of Addis Ababa financing for development conference but also uh, Sendai conferen conference dealing with the prevention of national di disasters. Now we have uh, the framework and the key word is implementation. Because with, with the, through the sustainable development goals we have pledged to change this world in 15 years. It's extremely ambitious and that means we have no time to waste. We have to start implementing these goals uh, from the day one uh, and we have to set the system or to adjust the system accordingly. So. Uh, uh, what's very important in uh, the su Sustainable Development Goals is that we understand that there can be no progress in development if there is no uh, well-functioning fun rule of law and good governance principles. So if, if the state is failing, then we can hardly th speak about improving this or that particular indicator. And this is the major change uh, of the SDGs compared to the previous set of goals. So we need UN was a leader and proved to be a leader in setting these agendas. Now we have to continue being a leader in implementing these agendas. Start with national ownership, keeping the political momentum, uh, putting together sets of uh, indicators and the adequate monitoring mechanism so that uh, we have uh, 
uh, at any time proper information about how are we doing and who is delivering and who is lagging behind. The system that will help uh, the countries that need more help, developing countries, least developed countries, fair burden sharing in, in, in implementing our process. And adjusting the system, the system of the UN agencies uh, must reflect the priorities for the UN and for the world so that we cle clearly know who is in charge of which of the goals, of the 17 goals, and that we can really report and, and be uh, aware of how well we are doing. Because it's our responsibility. It's still the same generation of, of diplomats and politicians that will have to report about uh, how successful we were in implementing, in, in delivering on these ambitious goals. The pledge to change the world in 15 years is really something uh, unique and I really believe it should motivate and activate all the, all, all the uh, competencies and all the, uh, all the resources we have at our disposal and I want to see United Nations being in the lead of this, of this huge endeavor. The last question is an open one. Is there something you would like to elaborate on or emphasize in outlining your thoughts on the job of UN Secretary General and its possibilities? I've always believed in uh, uh, the multilateral diplomacy and effective multilateralism with the United Nations being at its very core. United Nations is the most universal international organization and I wish to see UN being also the most respected, uh, most efficient, most relevant international organization. So uh, for this we all have to work uh, together and to join our forces. I want to say that uh, I like the new uh, process of selecting the next Secretary General, uh, the public part of it that uh, gives greater visibility of individual candidates, greater transparency into the process, and I think it already has helped to increase the image and authority of the, of the United Nations. I've uh, decided to uh, become part of this process uh, being uh, the only candidate from Central Europe. Uh, as a result of number of consultations, I'm the a sitting f um, foreign minister, uh, moreover of a country that currently presides over the European Union, uh, but I uh, received very strong encouragement from my government, from the president of my country, from the speaker of the parliament, but also from the expert community, NGOs, think tankers, those who are dealing with the foreign policy agenda. So uh, I am bringing into this process my experience. Uh, I think I have, uh, I am experienced enough and at the same time I have enough energy to contribute to the work of the United Nations and I really hope that uh, uh, the process will continue the, uh, the same successful way as it has started and I really hope that with the new Secretary General the United Nations will confirm its unique role and unique place in the system of the international relations and that's what I wish for the United Nations. Miroslav Lajczak, thank you very much. Thank you very much.